What's the word? What's the word? Arts and Small Talk Podcast, man. We back, man. New Year's 2021. Get it cracking, man. I'm going to start this off, man, with a dope, dope guest from St. Louis, man. Just been repping for years, man, doing this thing. Something like you you would call like a legend here in St. Louis as far as being an artist, man. Uh, sure. You know, this is episode 39, man. 39. I got the great, man, Zeus, a.k.a. Rucker Puff, you know what I'm saying? What's yeah, good yeah. with you, bro, bro? Hey, what's good, Small Talk? Appreciate you having me, my bro. Yeah, man. Like, I just want you to, uh, I want to definitely have you on the show, man, because I've been seeing you work for years, man. Being an artist, rapper, uh, being in the community, being the dad, man, just putting in work, man. Every every time I see you, I mean, it's something different, like a different, every week, you got some new content out, you know, new music. Yes, and so I want to touch on that, man. Like, how did, you know, like, what made you even start, like, rapping? Or what, when did it even start? Um, well, I, I've always been in the entertainment, even as a little kid. My cousins and I and my best friend, we used to um, emulate, you know, the Jackson 5. Or if you remember the group ABC or Boys to Men or yeah, Jodeci. Yeah. We was always, like, in talent shows. Early 90s. <laughs> early 90s definitely right. doing a lot of singing a lot of dancing a lot of stuff like that and then uh a guy from my neighborhood they used to cut my hair come to my house and cut my hair he was uh he a rapper he go by the name of uh marcus okay uh, he's not doing too much rap right now but he's still living for sure but uh he basically inspired uh, me and all of us to really really to have somebody that come to our house every day my house every day that i know was like going to a studio and recording their songs was like i was blown away by that i couldn't believe it i'm like damn we could actually go to the studio and record a song right. um and what ended up happening is i don't know if you remember but six flags in st louis had a studio at six flags where people used to do those dance videos you know what i'm talking about oh, yeah, 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 like yeah i know you're talking about yeah, my, yeah, I remember colors that. i remember that yeah well yeah. they had like a well, six flags also stuff. Boom, there you go. Everybody yeah. remember it from back then. They had them little funky ass looking videos. Yeah. <laughs> they also had they also had it where you could record a song and you can get your tape like right there. They'll print the tape up right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And we recorded this song. Uh me, my cousin, and my best friend was the first song we ever recorded, man. We came back to the hood, let everybody hear it. And uh that was probably 94, 95, somewhere up in there, man. And I ain't turned back since. Dang. So that's so yeah. that was that was the early nineties, man. And what what kind of made you just say, well, did you wait, let's, let's go back. Did you ever have a time where you was just like, I was just doing it for fun and now I want to take it serious? Like what was that like? like um, when was that? Like I said, I, I always known that I either wanted to like go to the NFL or so it was either for me, it was always either sports or music. And then like my other thing was like teaching and working with kids because I've always been working with kids all my life. Okay. Okay. So I done worked at fucking like um, Herbert Hoover, all okay. the boys and girls clubs. I didn't work that for the most part. So it was always either music, teaching or kids. Now, obviously, I didn't really I didn't want, you know, teaching to be my full on career. But I just figured, you know, my parents and my grandparents always like pump college, 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 college. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? No matter what we had going on, they still was like, nigga, you going to college. Right, so, right, right, right. Um, I knew I was going to have to go to college anyway. And I just figured I had my teacher degree, but I still some kind of way can go to NFL and still be like a big, huge music star. <laughs> <You> know, <so. laughs> what what you know. position did you play? I played offensive tackle. Now I always wanted to be a running back, and I, I never got the opportunity. <laughs> but uh, well, I, I did actually. I did play fullback a couple times in the game. I went to mm -hmm. Pattonville High School. I ended up graduating from Riverview, but all my football was at Pattonville. But uh, yeah, I was I was a, I I was definitely a pretty solid, you know, player. I don't know if I was good enough to go to the NFL, but I I feel like if I would have kept playing, I would I, I could have definitely. Home, yeah. like, yeah, I could have definitely like went for. I don't know if I was NFL material, probably not, because I didn't have a height for the position that I played. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, because I played tackle, and tackles are usually like Orlando pace, like six five, yeah, three yeah, thirty. Yeah. So I had the strength, and I had the the agility, but I didn't have a height. Height, to be like a yeah. college, 
year to be a college offensive tackle, but I could have probably played guard or center or center. Like yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. He tackles or something. Some, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. tight. So was because you were formerly known as Rucker Puff. Yeah. When when did you start that name? Did you have any names before that? Because I know like in the in the industry of like just learn learning, like get into music, you come up with like sometimes people be having like a ton of different names before they get one and stick. Man, oh my god, you the, and you know what's so crazy, bro, is you the first person that ever asked me that question, but I had hella names. I remember being Wow, my nickname that most people don't know unless you know me, know me from the hood or something. Mm-hmm. My nickname, nickname is Poo. So that's the nickname Poo. that my grandma came up with. So a lot of people, so if, a, if anybody around me ever called me Poo, I know they know me, know me, know me. Right, so right. <laughs> like, I was going by Poo at first. Then I went from Poo to Big B. And then from Big B, I was a um, baby pimp. And baby then after <laughs> baby pimp, I was, oh my God, horrible, right? Yeah. After Baby Pimp, I was a uh, ruckus, okay. and then the guys in the neighborhood start calling me Puff as a joke, just like being fat, like like puffed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, but the name, um, the name just kind of stuck, and uh, with the name sticking, can you hear me still? Somebody still trying to call. I guess I I, see. Okay, cool, cool. Well, with the name sticking, I just uh, took Puff and Ruckus and put it together, and that's how I got Rucker Puff. Wow, wow, yeah. and that, and that stuck that stuck that stuck to you. What um, uh, so going going back to being a rucker puff man, like, how was your first show? I know I know a lot of people be like nervous they first show when you had your first show. How was that? How was that like for you? Oh man, first my beginning. I'm not even I'm not even gonna lie, bro. Like my beginning shows was horrible my dude like I you always seem like you always be like entertaining like when i when i seen you performing back in the day man i you, you be like live like got your shirt off like you you amped yeah. up yeah well my my first shows wasn't amped up i remember the first show we did we did it as our group and dog like we stood we literally stood in one spot you know what i'm saying we stood in one spot and i always tell this story because it was like it was. I think it was like the city versus county, and we really thought that we was gonna win. Like, but we stood in one spot, and I'm talking about man. My uncle was finna fight the judges. Yeah, motherfuckers cheat. <laughs> but we stood in one spot, bro. But we just thought we was gonna win, man. We cried like some babies, dog. We just knew we was gonna win, and just knew we got cheated. But uh, how old so was my, you? And then if I, you don't mind me asking, how old was you around the time? You know, uh, teenager? definitely like yeah, like early teenager, probably like. 13, 14. Okay. Okay. So I'm like up somewhere up in there. I was young. 12, 13, between definitely between like 12 and 14. Dang. So when so when did it click to you? Did you have anybody that like in as in the industry, music industry that inspired you, that made you kind of like, you know what? I like what he's doing there. Let me, let me see if I can change uh, it. Up. I mean, not in person. It was like from a distance. You know how we all get inspired by stuff yeah. that we see. Yeah. I've always been inspired by like Busta Rhymes' performance. I think yeah. it's one of the dopest performances for hip hop. I can, I can definitely see that in you too. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say hip hop Busta is like top performances. Yeah. If he if he ain't top three, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He always and he always incorporated dancing and stuff too as well. Bro, him and Spliff on stage, yeah. my dude. Yeah. I damn near will put them up against against anybody. So I'm gonna say in hip hop, he's definitely top three. You know what Definitely. I mean? So Definitely. I, I found inspiration from watching um, you know, like studying game tape. I take a lot of I, I take a lot of stuff from football and I apply it to my life because football was like my first love. So uh studying game film and and watching great performers and stuff like that, that was inspiring to me. Uh, and then I think other than that, I think the biggest thing for me that makes my performance the way it is. It's just uh, not having any fear on stage and just embracing yeah. who I am and just, you know how some people, they stressed out and they smoke weed or you mm-hmm. stressed out and you yeah. do this or you do this or you need a way to uh, release all of yeah. that, your energy. My way is performing. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So I want to be, so I, I'm almost to the point where I want to be mad when I'm about to go on stage and it's even better if it's somebody that I know is hating uh-huh. and they at the show, it's even better because I'm gonna go, 
I'm gonna go ball. Yeah. I'm going all the way out. Right, right, right. I might, I might even just like stand up like this, and at the end of the show, just be like, boom! And just fall <laughs> to the ground. Like it's that, it's that serious to me to yeah. do that for you to yeah. walk away and be like, I've never seen nobody do no shit like that on stage in my life. Right. Like that's important to me. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And when when you when you develop that craft of being a better performer, um. You just kind of like just did your studying and you start applying it to the stage. Yeah, yeah, just applying it to the stage and start being. I I think it just comes for real small talk. I mean, and you a performer, you know. I think it right. a lot of it comes with just being comfortable with yourself, being comfortable exactly. in your own skin. A lot of people, uh, I feel like a lot of people never reach their full potential because they're afraid. They're afraid of what somebody's going to say. To say yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, they go, they're afraid of, yeah, basically of what people think and what people are going to say. When you get to the point when it don't matter, then, you know, you unleash, you unleash and uncage and unlock, I feel like, things here and here that you didn't know that you were even capable of doing. Yeah, obviously, to some degree, we all care about what people say. So I'm not saying, oh, I don't care yeah, about, I know, yeah, about yeah. what nobody say, but I'm just saying in the aspect of, to make it where you can use, you know what I mean? You just, I, I just feel like you can't just zero in on everything everybody say. Like, like just for instance, some dude just hit me out the blue and he was like, bro, that song whack as hell. He was talking about a song I posted. He was like, man, that song whack as hell, bro. You need my help. Write you some hits, bro. I, I write it, no charge. whoop de whoop bam, bam, bam. And it's just like, and I ain't take offense to it because I just look because I don't even know you for real. Right, so I'm so looking much, at you yeah. like you just a, a fan, like or whatever you are. I don't know. But you know, to some people that could like really destroy everything that you're doing. That could really deter you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking right. at the situation and I'm like, my G, like to have an opinion is one thing, but to say something is whack is like I'm yeah. like bro I've never made nothing that was whack like I ain't made nothing that every I now nobody can do something that every single person likes that's right not right possible. that's that's yeah you can't can't but please I'm everybody like, <laughs> you can't please everybody but I'm like my dude whack is kind of a strong word and I'm like on top of that you know what I'm saying this song got more views than every other song like you know what I mean but yeah, I'm, I feel, I, I, yeah. I'm going left because that was on my mind. So I had to speak on that. But I'm yeah. just saying, man, we just on one end of, of that spectrum of what I'm saying is you can't let what people say deter you off of your path. You know what I'm saying? So let's just keep it there. Let's keep yeah. it. You can't let what people say deter you off your path. You got to do what you got to do. So his comment is not going to make me not perform the song. Like, right, 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 right. I'm going to post the same video. <laughs> the same I mean, you got to you got to believe that like that any of the artists you people got on their phones like it's gonna be some person that don't like that song like it's of just, course it's just of a course. fact yeah and you can't you can't get mad you can just you gotta keep gotta keep pushing yeah, the stuff you out. keep pushing it and i don't even like really like really in real life i am really don't even have to respond but i'm just like i'm so real right now yeah i've been real and i'm so just into my craft and i'm just so into the spirit then I'm going. I'm going to reply anyway because I want. I because I think a lot of times, uh, and not that I'm no big superstar, or big celebrity, or nothing like that. But I think a lot of times, even with people like me, people don't really expect you to respond. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I even had, I even had somebody in my like. I swear, man, dude was on all my posts, bro. Every time he got on my post, bro, he was like throwing a jab. He was hating. It's the weirdest shit that happens, small. Then and I swear the nigga got in my DM and was straight up like, where I need to send music to sign to your label. And I'm like, bro, like for somebody that you think is so whack, right. <laughs> I'm so whack, bro. But you straight up six months straight, every time you got on the on the on the page, you said something negative, bro. Like like negative, right. real negative. And then you actually DM me. It was like, how do I sign with the label? I was just like, I couldn't understand, yeah. bro. Because he said you put in work. Yeah, and then work. he re when I when I, I looked at it like this fuck nigga, I ain't for to respond to this nigga. He a troll. He all heard trolling. Right. Then when I did respond, he was like, Oh, so Mr. So and so, you ain't gonna respond. Now then I said, oh, you big time. No, you too big. This nigga know what it is, bro. And then it was like so crazy because he he did he he did it's like he wanted my attention. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's some I, I don't know what the fuck going on with people, bro. It's just some weird shit. Maybe it's just the internet. I don't know. Whatever. It could be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, bro. So, so man, look, check it out. So, this transformation, I, I feel like, you know, because I remember when I, when I first seen you, when I first seen you was a, more heavy set. I mean, you was heavy set. You know, you fat had shirt off. Come on, small well, set. Got, yeah, okay, he's fat as hell. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Yes, you had the shirt off. You get, I mean, like, but I love that. Like when I first seen you perform, man, like you probably didn't even know I was even in the building because you ain't know me until like a year ago. But man, I watched you. I used to always be like at performances. I used to perform at the same places you perform. Like you'll be like performing early, and I'll probably jump on stage with an artist or I'll do like something, something later on in the day. But I always seen you at the same events, um, in like summer events. Um, mm-hmm. and then um and then, you know, like I noticed, like you've been, you've been eating, you, your body is transforming. You know what I'm saying? You, you working out, you, you, you going hard in the gym, man. And so what, what made you like, you know, change your, change your lifestyle a little bit? Uh, my dad, man, was, was heavy, was super heavy. And he had fell down the steps. And when he fell down the steps, uh, being heavy and having diabetes, mm-hmm he was like, he couldn't do nothing, man. Like I had to wipe my dad's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like he couldn't do nothing. He was fucked up and he had all kind of other health complications just from falling down the steps. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think for me, that was a turning point. Um, and I was just like, man, I gotta, I gotta change. I gotta change it up. You know what I mean? I want to be here. I want to be around. Yeah. And I don't want to fall and break a bone. And now my kids got to, you know, wipe my ass, which we still can fall and break a bone. That don't have nothing to do with weight, but he was already, he was just so heavy yeah. that he just couldn't really do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And he lost, he didn't, he didn't lost a whole lot of weight too. Shit, he that's smaller than me. But yeah, it is a blessing. So that was the big thing, man. And then just, 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 just challenging myself and uh, just testing my body, man. And I got a long way to go, man, but I'm definitely, uh, I'm, I'm definitely can, I definitely can run through a wall. Uh, I'm definitely strong as an ox. I'm definitely strong mentally and physically. And uh, yeah, man. Yeah, 45 minutes set, I can go do that shit. And I ain't That's stopping. Tight. That's tight. You know? But I, I, I could do that when I was when I was 352, though. So, so you was I don't know. big and agility. You had some agility back then, too. Huh? Yeah, because I was always still an athlete. So I was fat as hell, but I still was like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, still yeah. Active, you know That's what I'm saying? Now was. Yeah, now I, I I just I'm just more healthier. Put it like that, you know. What gotcha. I'm so I know it's a lot of artists out there that um, it's kind of like me and you, you know, like got kids, and and still and still out here trying to push their art out here, they craft, they, you know, just trying to get their content out. So how is it when you are being a dad and mixing that and balancing it out with being an artist as well? How is it for you? Uh, I think it can definitely be challenging. Uh, mm-hmm. And it has been challenging because when my kids was younger, you know, you kind of screen the content a little bit more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I and I don't I don't I can't really say that I did the best job at that. But with my kids all being like my youngest is like 17 now. OK, so when the Rucker Puff thing really, really super jumped off the internet wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Right, right. So my kids still didn't really see a whole lot of stuff versus now I'm a lot more open with my content because they're a lot older. I don't have little, I don't have small children. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got adults but, almost just about. Basically, yeah. So, but no, nah, man, it, it still was challenging, man, because it's like, you don't want them to hear certain stuff. I mean, I'm not going to play a show me them titty song in front of my, my girls and they, 10 years old you know right, what i'm right, saying right so, right 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 it, it, it's definitely challenging you know what i'm saying because you like damn on your end it's like shit i'm a, i'm grown i'm an adult but it's like damn I, but i got yeah my girl yep. so i can't just do whatever and let them hear whatever either so and you I, got I all girls i got all girls bro wow i got three girls yeah. Yes, sir. Are oh, you right behind me? I got four. Yeah, I got three so girls right and one boy, me. so I got four oh, kids. Man. Like this. So you got lucky. Maybe God bless me. <laughs> I got son. one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's tight, man. Um, I wanted to also touch on you and your community work, man. Like I, I like I said earlier, 
I've been noticing, you know, last year I know it was hard for everybody to do anything with around people and doing anything with doing COVID. But the year before and the year before that, like I've been seeing you put in work, man. Like you got any advice for people out there that's trying to like just get into the community and like, you know, um, spread love and, you know, just kind of like just being involved. Like, how did you even get into that? And, and if you can drop any gems for anybody that's trying to do that. Uh, I think you said it best, Small Talk. I mean, it's not really when it comes to um, helping in your community. It's exactly what you said. Get involved. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, even if you like, you know, you pick a few kids with parent supervision saying that it's OK and you, you know, you good at math and they just might help with all some homework. You know what I mean? Or even if it's if, even if it's taking the time out of your day to throw that football with a couple of the kids in your complex, like that's still community work, bro. You I know what I mean? So like, I don't think community work has to always be like, boop, boop, boop. Oh, we're gonna boop, boop, boop. I think anytime you doing something, a good deed in your community, man, you don't know, you never know like how you affecting, how you affecting it. You know what I'm saying? The youth or affecting somebody that's younger than you. You know what I'm saying? I just pull up sometimes in my complex, my homeboy work at like Hershey it's a bunch of kids outside I just popped the trunk open and I had a trunk full of chocolate and I'm like here man y'all take this get, this get this shit away here y'all take this get to y'all mamas whoever y'all just you know or just like in another scenario it's a little youngster that was in the neighborhood and he was kind of like antagonizing this older white guy and the white guy asked me he like man can you talk to him and uh -huh. you know boop the bob boop. I'm like yeah I ain't got no problem talking to him you know what I'm saying but it's like some of us uh, be quick to be like, I ain't talking to him. Damn, my goddamn son. Right, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. And that's not the right attitude to have. I still believe in that old moniker. It takes a village because it, it really does. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your, your mom and dad or maybe a lot. Well, a lot of these kids don't even have two parents. Let's say that. 90% of them don't. Yeah, especially in so the black with community. that being said, especially in the black, that's what we talking about too, for sure. I'm talking about us. Black yeah, yeah, and Latino yeah. probably community. Yeah, yeah, well, they yeah, may yeah. have, they may, they percentage may be higher. I don't know the analytics on that. But I'm going to say, uh, if, if, even if it's not, if, if, it, even if it's not, didn't come from us, it's, those are still our kids, bro. So we still got to pull them to the side. If we see a little dude, he's 17, he didn't got small with this old lady at the store, bro, like what you want, bro? Like mm -hmm. you got to, we got to, I know we don't want to say nothing because they, they all carry straps and shit like that, bro. But yeah. it's like we got to, bro. We don't have no choice. Yeah, because you know a, a lot of a lot of a lot of us in the in the uh, black community, we just suffer from childhood trauma, man. Like yeah. how how you brought up, like where you come from, like where you how how was you living in the house? Was your mom there? Was your dad there? Was you was your sister, your older sister, the one that's watching you all the time? You eight years old still can do whatever you want to do, say whatever you want to say. You right. know, just not having that proper that proper household that, you know, we need as, as a black community. And I think that's what affects the teens and it goes into adulthood where you can do worse because you can drive into somebody, you can shoot somebody, you can, you know, just do more damage as an adult. And we, we, we you know, we have our shortest years are, are when we kids and that's the most important time, man, to really like get your mind together. You know, so by, by the time you adult, you're going to be adult a long time. You know, yes, sir. A lot of a lot of a lot of our childhood is what gives us the trauma. And, you know, like that's why I'm, I asked you about that, because I know you big into the community and I'm I'm on my way. You know, what I'm saying I'm, I'm trying to get, you know, besides me teaching kids and, you know, pulling some kids to the side that might may look like they need help. You know, like I'm I really I'm really big on trying to get these, especially the black men, like the black young men. Yeah, um, to be grow up to be better fathers and hell yeah, you know, we kinda, need it, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, cause... we need it. So, and I'm a um, I got a couple different programs. So I'm gonna make okay. sure that I reach out to you. Yeah, for sure. So for that sure. you want, if you want to come in and, and donate some time and just you know Please. say some words or yes. see if there's some kids that's interested in your profession. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna definitely uh keep you posted on that. We're gonna turn that up a little bit more now that hopefully things start um digressing with digressing COVID. with the COVID. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. All right, and then closing, man. I want to uh, I always ask my guests this, man. I'm gonna see if you see if you got something for me. Uh, I always ask my guests, what was the most embarrassing moment you had in performing, mm. or or if something dealing with you being active around people? Like, what was you have any one of your most embarrassing moments you can laugh at now? Um, the one I I could probably say that's off the top of my head 
was we did a show in Springfield, Illinois. It had to be 10 years ago. We was all on stage. This is when I was record pub. We was rocking. Mm -hmm. It was about, man, about 10 of us up there rocking, kicking it. Hey! All of a sudden, the whole stage collapsed. Oh. <laughs> the whole damn hey. stage collapsed. How many bro. people you had on stage? It was like 10 of us up there. Oh, and all of us was big. It was at least four of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, 300 big. something. You know what I'm saying? Dang. That's when I was about three. I was about 340. I know bigger brown that's on stage with me he probably was 350 and you know what i'm saying we man we just the whole damn stage collapsed blue Dang. and we looked around and we got right back up oh hey, start just going hard we went to, I was went that to the, the turkey ham song no nah, turkey ham went out man this was when uh i had the song i called angry okay like my first song that i had put out in like oh four nice. and uh so this could have been longer than 10 years ago but i'm gonna say that was the most kind of Kind of sort yeah, of embarrassing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but we kept that's, rocking though. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, we kept rocking shit. That's we got crazy. up, we got right up, start rocking again. Shit. That's what's up. And and one more thing, man. Um, one more thing. So for the artists that's coming up, man, you got any advice could because you still doing your thing, man. You just said 10 years ago, you know what I'm saying? And you still, I mean, you've been putting in work since you was a teenager. So yeah. like how how are you keeping it moving? Like that's for one. How are you keeping it moving? And for artists that's coming up in the game, how can they kind of you know get through the? I'm pretty sure you dealt with some some depression situations in life, and yeah. you're still out here putting in work, man. Like, what is some advice for that? Um, I'm gonna say you gotta be first off. You gotta have a love for it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You can't do nothing for no long ass time that you don't love and if you only doing something specifically for the money then you're not going to probably stay in it that long anyway you know what i'm saying because right, it was right. only for the money so i'm saying that to say that i have a, a love uh, and a passion for music and the arts and performing you know what i mean so even if i was never to be little wayne you know what I'm saying? I would still do something pertaining to the arts and the music because I just have a passion for it um, so first thing I would say, music contained pertaining to music is you definitely got to have a passion for the music. If it's just about the money, it's then just stop now. You know what I'm saying? Or don't stop. Figure out a way to how you make money off of it, so at least you can make money if you go while you're doing it. Nice. Uh, and if you want to know how to make money off of it, we have a class for that. You can hit me up, DM me, and uh, you know, say you can sign up to the Rebel University. But anyway, right. besides that. I would say if you are doing it and you got a passion, you just got to have good people around you, man. You got to make sure you got people around you that's willing to sacrifice. Y'all willing to split that $4 meal at Wendy's. Y'all willing to ride 10 hours out of town, even if it's only 10 people at the show. You nice. just got to have people that's uh that's willing to sacrifice with you. You know what I'm saying? And that's willing to walk through the valley with you. A true team. A true team. Yes, sir. That's what's up. Well, tell everybody how they can follow you, my dude, and, and what's what you got coming up, what songs you got out that you want people to check out, all the good stuff. Y'all can follow me on all social media platforms at Zeus Rebel Waters. That's Z-E-U-S Rebel, R-E-B-E-L. Waters, like the water that you drink. My album is out right now. It's called Long Way From Home. Um, mm -hmm. I guarantee you it's one of the best albums out right now. One of the most diverse albums you'll ever hear in your life. So download that on all platforms. The video Love is all right now. Sunday is all right now. Go check out both videos on my YouTube. Look out for the movie coming soon called Popo. Uh -oh. My new label, Born Ready Records, is official. And uh, that's it, man. Stay positive and be your motherfucking self, man. Word. Well, that's what's up, Zeus, man. I appreciate you joining me, man. Like I say, we're going to do some work, man. We're going to do some work together, man. It's good to, it's good to see you. And uh, Yes, sir. It's, it's good to just kind of have a, a somebody on the side that we can, you know, that we can always like, you can look at me, look for me for dance and I can look for you for some just artist stuff. Like, man, that's dope, yeah. man. And also we're going to work on getting them, getting these kids together too, man. So I appreciate that, bro. Okay. I appreciate you having me, bro. I still need that hold up challenge. From yep. I'm about, to, I'm about to, I'm about to drop that. Yep. I'm about to drop that hold up. Yeah. I was just about to ask you what that, what that song was. I heard it. I, I think I might have me and my son do something with it. So. Yeah. that will be hard. Them. Keep me posted, bro. I got you. I'm gonna drop right, this. Uh, I'm dropping this um, Monday, so 